In the past few days, flood relief efforts have extended way beyond the Commonwealth, and eastern Kentuckians who have left the mountains are returning to help. WYMT's Alyssa Williams has the story of how one Breathitt County native's idea for her community took flight. After hearing how flood waters left her family and community devastated, Dr. Randy Barnett, a Breathitt County native who now lives and works in North Carolina, knew she needed to come back home. They were telling me there was no physical way for me to get here at that time. All the roads were covered or blocked off. That's when a colleague, who is also a pilot in training, wanted to help the neurosurgeon in any way he could. And Randy had reached out to the neurosurgery department and they banded together to bring lots of donations to her home while she was working and have them ready to go for us to fly here today. Dr. Barnett and resident anesthesiologist Dr. Philip Scholes were able to fly from North Carolina to the Wendell H. Ford Airport to deliver supplies and reunite Barnett with her family. So the fact that we got to do that today to come together, or rather to bring her over here with all the supplies that she collected was just a big win for myself personally and big win for us all around. Dr. Barnett says although it's heartbreaking to see how the region is hurting, she feels confident it will rise again. I just want to say to the people of Kentucky, you know, you got lots of angels everywhere that really care about you. And um, we're going to grieve, but we're going to get through it and we're going to rebuild. And, you know, we're Eastern Kentuckians are strong people. We're sought of the earth people and we'll figure it out and we'll be able to move forward together. In Perry County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Although Dr. Barnett had to return to North Carolina today, she says she hopes to eventually move back to the Commonwealth to continue helping Kentuckians that need it most. The Buckhorn community in Perry County has become a hub for supplies pouring into the region. The school and parking lot were covered in floodwaters last week. Officials say the school is a huge part of the community, and now that community is doing whatever it can to help one another and get supplies to other communities. We had uh, four horses come from Vico yesterday. They had saddlebags. We sacked up uh, non perishable sack lunches and they took it to the home. But our community, we're small, but we've all come together. We've had every school teacher over here from the high school has helped in some way. The ball teams have come. Former ball teams have come. The Perry County Board of Education is expected to meet tomorrow to determine how and when the school year will start. Another school was heavily damaged, Robinson Elementary in Perry County. Now, one of the items found intact inside the Buckhorn School was their In God We Trust plaque. Well, we've seen a couple of renegade showers pop up as we've headed into the afternoon hours, but for the most part, we're all quiet into the mountains, though I will say there's a bit of buzzing going on into portions of our Pikeville Medical Center camera right now. Our WASP friends are saying hello, checking in on us after a rough week we've had out there. Pikeville Medical Center camera, they sit at 83 and things are all quiet uh, out there, except for, of course, the hive of activity near the camera at the moment. Mountain Parkway at Slade. Well, again, all quiet, though a few of those clouds trying to bubble up in the distance. Middle and upper 80s around the region, so we've already seen the beginning of that heat working into the region with those feels like temperatures in the low 90s in many spots. Pinpoint Doppler, mostly a clean sweep, but a few downpours, I even generously call them downpours near Salyersville right now, right along the mountain parkway as you head into Salyersville. And then no one just east of Paintsville right now and further to the south, one on the Floyd Pike County line near uh, really between McDowell and Pikeville. These are not very heavy. And they will continue to scoot onto the east uh, very fast as we head through the remainder of tonight. So nothing to worry about with these. Partly to mostly clear as we head into the overnight upper 60s to near 70 as we finish things off on our Tuesday. Now the latest though on the heat building in for Wednesday and beyond, that's coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. While many are hurting across the region for one victim of the recent storms, this is the second time that she's had her home destroyed. WYMT's Lucy Bryson has that story. I guess it didn't take me and my son maybe six minutes to get what we needed to get out. And when we come back out, it was right up to my waist. 
Flooding in eastern Kentucky has torn apart the lives of so many. Hundreds have had their homes taken away overnight. I had my son on my mind, even though he's 24 year old. I had him on my mind and I grabbed my dog and I'm like, we just, we just gotta go. Houses were washed away and many Kentuckians are having to rebuild. But for flood victim, Teresa Neese, this is the second time this year that she's had her home destroyed. I lost a home in Heiner down in Beulin the 19th of July of last year, the house collapsed. This time last year, she watched her house and all her belongings fall. That evening, I was alone in the house when the props broke, and my mother had to watch me run for my life as the house was falling. So that's twice in a year I've had to run for my life from something that I didn't see coming. Last week, she barely got out in time to watch her new house do the same thing. Then we was able to get out, you know, my memories, my, some of our clothes and belongings. This time, I wasn't able to get nothing. Niece, like so many others in Perry County, are having to start from scratch after devastating floods took everything from them. If we weren't in a community that cared, we wouldn't be where we're at right now because we're all we got. But with help desperately needed. We don't need you to come in and give us money that's no we're not begging for money we're begging for help to get restarted communities are looking for compassion the most in perry county lucy bryson wymt mountain news well niece and her family are all safe but she says that if she had not moved to higher ground when she did she could have easily lost her own life WYMT and Food City are teaming up to help raise money for flood relief and donating is incredibly easy. When you're at the checkout line, your cashier will ask you if you want to round up your total or you can donate the amount of your choice. Steve Smith, Food City's president and CEO, says 100% of proceeds will go towards flood relief and they know the struggles ahead as they communicate with their associates across the region. Hopefully they can get to the people as soon as possible. We know the need and and uh, from talking to our associates and seeing the, the, the damage on the ground and, and knowing what the challenges are and the topography of Eastern Kentucky, we, we know the people need help. Smith himself has ties to Eastern Kentucky. He tells us he's married to a Pike County native. Governor Andy Beshear made several more stops in the mountains today, announcing federal funding opportunities and updating folks who are cleaning up and working to move forward. WIMT's Buddy Forbes followed the governor to his first two stops in Pike and Floyd counties. Powerful damage and destruction. The violence of what this water did is indescribable. Met with potential dollars coming in. Dollars are there for individuals to help them start rebuilding. We are grateful for that. And this is the fastest I've seen individual assistance granted after a natural disaster. Governor Andy Bashir visited Pike and Floyd counties Tuesday, announcing federal individual assistance for places ravaged by flood water. We stop tough people up for tough tasks. Yes. We will find the resources and we will rebuild our little communities come hell or high water. And while he says the money could be life-saving for many as they work to rebuild, he says it is not the funding people should celebrate, but the folks. Our other Kentuckians wading through the water, making sure that they can get people to safety. Leaders say the money is needed and they hope to see it help as the people impacted continue to serve, getting where they can. What you're seeing behind us is a little bit of who we are as Kentuckians. Saving lives. There's no pressure, we're counting on you to save Only by the grace of God did we not have uh, loss of life here in Pike County. And pouring into one another. Even though we've had to deal with the flood, but we are still blessed. As they work to rebuild, reclaim, and recover. But we will get back on our feet. Yes, we get knocked down. It's okay to not be okay. It is okay to not be okay. By sticking together. Up. Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Governor Bashir says his office is working to get a face-to-face -face application assistance office set up in these areas. Until then, anyone in the impacted places can begin an application for assistance. You can find that application link on our website. 
Governor Bashir continued his tour of flood ravaged areas late this afternoon in Breathitt County. The governor took time to update folks on how recovery is going in that area and what people can do to receive federal assistance. Now, while he wasn't able to put an exact number still on the amount of people missing in the flooding, the governor said there is some really good news from state police. If there is good news, most of the people reported as missing to the Kentucky State Police have been found. They've done over a thousand wellness checks with most everybody showing up and as we got cell phone service in most places. Certainly some good news. The death toll still stands at 37. With warmer weather in the forecast, the governor also announced the creation of cooling stations in several counties. In Breathitt County, folks can go to the Jackson uh, Library to cool off. We have a list of all those cooling stations on our website. FEMA has also set up an in-person registration center in Jackson to help people sign up for individual assistance. We have the location of all the FEMA registration centers on our website as well. We want to remind you we're partnering with the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky and Appalachian Regional Healthcare for Appalachia Rises. Scanning the QR code on your screen will take you to our fundraiser page. There you can find information on both relief funds. And today we learned that Hazard native Joe Kraft and his wife, former UN Ambassador Kelly Kraft, will now match every dollar we raise now up to one and a half million dollars. One and a half million dollars. Speaking to our sister station WKYT earlier, Kelly spoke a little bit about what led them to help. Well, I, th I think the most important thing is when Joe was telling me about his childhood in East Kentucky, what really struck me was his first jobs were actually cleaning out homes from, floods. Well, from flooding. Uh, and young person. You know, to see to see that emotion from Joe, and, and you know, when you have when you're called to serve, you have to meet. You got to meet it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and again, Joe is from Hazard. I assume he's talking about either the '57 or uh, '63 floods, uh, devastating river floods uh, here in Hazard. The couple is well known for their philanthropy efforts, donating millions of dollars to organizations that serve those in need. Well, coming up, hot, humid, and stormy weather is on the way back to the mountains. The very latest coming up right after this. Plus, we'll take you to Wolf County, where that school district is helping families in need from hard-hit neighboring Breathitt County. 